honorable and perfectly self-enlightened worshippers Buddha, consummated in knowledge and behavior. Hello to you friends, this is Dhamma on Air number 136. A Dhamma conversation with the Venerable Dhamma Gavesi on all aspects of the Dhamma here on the release, Nibbana, the Four Noble Truth and the Noble Eightful Way. And you are indeed welcome. Thank you. Friends, the Four Noble Truth, Chacharya, Arya Satyani, which is the very core of Buddhism, are one, all this, and such is suffering, dukkha. Two, craving is the cause of all suffering, dukkha samudaya. Three, absence of all craving is the end of suffering. Dukkanirodo. Four. The noble eightfold way leads to the end of suffering. Dukkanirodo Kamani Patipalava. The noble eightfold way. This noble way leading to Nirvana is Simply this, right view, samaditi, right motivation, samma sankappa, right speech, samma vaja, right action, samma kamanta, right livelihood, samma ajiva, right effort, samma vajama, right awareness, samma sati and right concentration, Samma Samadhi. But what is right speech? What is this imperative right speech? The fourfold definition of right speech is as follows. One, avoiding all lying pretending and any false speech. Two, abstaining from any kind of divisive or splitting talk. Three, refraining from all aggressive or irritated scolding. Four, stealing of any ill and empty gossiping. That is right speech. The characterization of noble speech is eliminating all false speech. Any noble friends dwells, avoiding all lies. He's a true speaker, one to be relied upon, trustworthy, loyal, not a deceiver of the world, abstaining from malicious speech, he does not tell them there what he has heard about those here, or repeat here what he have heard over there, harming those there. Thus he is a reconciling diplomat, stealing all quarrels. The noble friend is still rejoicing in peace, loving peace, delighting in it, and defends peace, abandoning all harsh and aggressive speech. He refrains from it. He speaks whatever is blameless and pleasing to the ear, agreeable, touching the heart, elegant, gratifying, 
and appealing to the many. Discarding idle and empty chatter, he speaks at the right time, and only about what is correct, advantageous, and to the point. He speak about Dhamma, and he speak about self-control. He is a speaker whose words are to be treasured and remembered, timely, reasoned, well-defined, well-formulated, beneficial, and leading to the goal. This is right and noble speech. For more on right speech, Samavaja, go to whatbuddhasit.net and see under drops what is right speech. And there's also a video called Truth Always Triumph on Bhikkhu Samahita's YouTube channel. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day. Then we say there are good actions, there are bad actions. There are this world and there's a next world. So this is uh, something that is inherent also in right view. This is to say that there are other worlds and this world we share with the animals. That there are other beings. And there we have from Buddhist cosmology that there are 31 levels of existence. It starts with level one, hell beings. Uh, then angry demons, then hungry ghosts, then animal beings, then humans at level five, and then various deg the various degrees of divine beings. But this is an article of right view to say, ah, we don't know, we cannot see the other worlds, but we have a view, an opinion that there is other worlds. And then the last article is that there are pure recluses and monks that can, by their own direct experience, uh, come to see and understand these worlds and then come and explain them to us as we do, are doing right now. That is right view. So this means that if somebody says, ah, this monk, he's speaking about reincarnation or he's speaking about another world, uh, which is reincarnation also is inherent in the other world. You, you experience this world and then you die, then you experience another world. So uh, if, the, if somebody says that this monk is, is saying something wrong, then it's wrong view on, on their behalf. And the Buddha say there's nothing as detrimental, as disadvantageous, as terrible as wrong view. Because a uh, wrong view puts out your behavior for a long time forward and thereby by your accumulating karmic future even longer time forward. That is many lives can be even universes down the road. That these views of whether this is correct or not, you don't know, you have no direct experience of it. Uh, yet, but you still have an opinion about whether it's right or not. For example, is reincarnation a fact or not? Uh, is, is that devas, is that divine beings, yes or no? Is, it, is this right or not? This is basically views. When enlightened, then one has direct experience. Then it's not any more views. Then you, you have right knowledge, right understanding. So then you don't need views. But until then, one needs right view to accept that this effect, and the karmic law is effect also. So Bhante, just to iterate what you just said about yeah. reincarnation, rebirth or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Just take the simplicity of this piece of stick. Yeah. In the convention you call one side the beginning, yes. the other side the end. Yeah. If by any chance this Bhante takes this piece of stick and breaks this here. Yeah. 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 I've created a beginning. The, yeah. This is the ending. Yeah. And this ending caused yeah. this beginning. Yeah. Okay, yes. so you cannot break something and create an end without this end creating a new beginning. No, true. Okay, true. So simple as this. Yeah, yeah. So this is what the Buddha tries to explain to us yeah. that until you enlighten, yeah. every time you break, yeah. the break causes a new beginning. New the, beginning. The yeah. last thought yeah. causes the new beginning. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it doesn't matter what you take, piece of paper, you tear. One side causes the existence of the new beginning. Yeah, the yeah, true, true. So you break. So you give anybody, say, break, create an end, yeah. and don't create a beginning. Impossible. Until you come to this end here. Yeah, yeah, true. Then there's nothing to break. No. So, as long as our past is with us, our investments are with us, our defilements are with us, hmm. they feed a future creating longevity, hmm. longevity, 
longevity and this longevity is what this bhava tanna is about mm. so what you and i want to have now got ourselves into is we come to this journey and very quickly without before this breaks we are quickly trying to get rid of this so we don't have to start again mm. this is what we are trying to accomplish yeah. reducing reducing Redu- yeah. reducing accumulation yes so mm. we are we're not going to okay but at the same time the past what we have we are trying to wipe it off mm. so we fast forward ourselves to this point mm. this propels me into the next uh, phase because what pandi says is ah uh, uh this is right motivation of of the monk and of those who are on the path they have a completely other motivation that the, those who are not on the path those who are not on the path they want to accumulate by those who are the, on the path they want to decumulate they want to withdraw out of society out of the bus out of the hamster wheel uh, in order to uh, seek this subtle peace and so there's two more articles so this we, we call withdrawal withdrawal either withdrawal physically in the body or withdrawing mentally or both withdrawal away from the boss away from whatever is creating uh, suffering and then this this uh, i think easy to see also because when you understand other beings they also are suffering then how could one harm them so uh, this non cruelty which is another factor of right motivation and this good will this harmlessness uh, which is the last factor this this comes natural huh Uh, if you are trying to reduce your own suffering then obviously all other beings they are also trying to reduce your own suffering how can you then harm them huh? and uh, if you know the karmic law that it's impossible to harm other beings without harming yourself and this is what's a factor of right view knowing the karmic law uh, well then this right motivation sama sankappa and also comes nature uh, after that uh, comes a uh, right speech we we already dwelt with that uh, right speech So we can repeat them again is basically first of not musavada not speaking false not speaking harsh not scolding not speaking divisively not slandering others speaking about others when they're not there uh, repeating there what you heard uh, had heard there and uh, saying there what you heard there so you you don't try to split anybody up in groups and the last one is empty talk empty babble 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 up and down the row about famous actors and uh, uh, sports and uh, what have you all these kinds of clothes but also philosophical views of whether the world is eternal or not or infinite or not so this is basically the right speech i think also one thing that has been a value for myself that right speech also goes what you say to yourself usually for example lying life lying you have a lie about your own life and your role in your own life this is something that you first tell yourself you tell it to yourself a lot of times that i am this and that and i'm comparing to this and that with others and this and that being very proud of what you find out whether true or not uh, so uh, if not true and usually it's exaggerated huh so uh, the goodness is exaggerated and the badness of uh, this so called ego this is uh, diminished huh this is reduced but uh, if you suddenly you start to believe because of repetitive uh, lying to yourself internally it's not something that comes out the mouth it's internal speech that one is having one himself often of a repetitive pattern again and again saying the same thing the others are wrong and i'm right and so on then one starts to be- to believe this lie and then this because what life lie you can say so so it's not something that you say to somebody else you say to yourself then eventually you will start to say to some to somebody else and if you believe it then they might also believe it if you be really very firmly or let's say they don't believe it then usually one will become very aggressive that they don't believe it they see the lie huh this is not the case the one is so beautiful or so clever so intelligent so they 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 deny uh, they they admit the facts but one cannot see the facts oneself the, the sense here is that if one believes the lie oneself and they don't then one will become very aggressive why don't they believe my lie if if this is about myself my role in my own life and my role in society which is so glorified everybody falls in love with this ego uh tragically and comically also huh? so everybody falls in love with this ego and try to paint it uh, nice and then when they don't believe it there's aggressiveness and pride and if they believe it there can be uh, the opposite namely arrogance uh, that uh, i'm this and that going around puffing oneself up so uh, this naturally propels into this right speech 
comes in comes into right action. What is right action? I think maybe when they once took, you could just sketch it up. What is right action seen from a Buddhist point of view? Yes. So, but the right action first is to let, uh, never to harm yourself or harm another with. So, in that harm is to distract their life, to kill. Yeah. To, but don't bring no harm on yourself or don't bring no harm on another mm. with what you say and with what you do. Mm. Demonstrate this. That is the right action. Second is to never take anything that doesn't belong to you. So, uh, even, you know, we say that only take things that are given to you. Mm. Yes. Mm. But beyond that is that even this society expects us to be what is called a good Samaritan. Mm. If you see a pile of notes, money fallen on the street, mm. you will quickly go see it and as a good Samaritan, you'll pick it up and you'll try to find somebody of authority to give it. Mm. Police. Police. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Not yours. No. But you, you try to give it, but if yeah. you can't find anybody now yeah. that you collected, well, I don't know what will happen. You have yeah. to make the judgment there. Yeah. But the next day, if you go past the same place and you see a pile of poo, hmm. now what do you do? Nah, you don't pick it up. You give it to the policeman. Nah. <laughs> no, you don't give it. No, no. You, you walk over it. Yeah. How come you collected the money, but not the poo? Hmm. Still, it was not yours. Hmm. The poo is not yours. The money is not yours. Hmm. So, this is because naturally we give a value set. Mm. So, depending on the value set, we become a Samaritan of value and we deal with it accordingly. Mm. But now, the naturally is do not become a witness to things that are not yours. Mm. Mm. You don't have to stand up anywhere and give and become an eyewitness to anything. No. Mm. Just walk over it. Mm. Somebody has left it there. Mm. It's theirs. Mm. Mm. Not that they dropped it. Don't participate in anything that is basically not your future so, and not your present. So true. Uh, okay. Right. That's a good uh, side note, you yeah. can say. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. And next thing, Bhante, is about in this universe that we are born into, Bhante, other lives are born. Everybody that is born has to have some resources to exist. Mm. So don't take what is theirs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is respecting another life. Don't harm them. Respect what they have for their life. Don't take use theirs. Mm. Don't steal. Mm. Now, Bhante, you have to interact with others that are there. Mm. Depending on the role you play, do not misbehave in your role in sexual natures. Abuse, sexual abuse. Not only that, but yeah. you should also not allow them to abuse you. Mm. Both way. Mm. Mm. Both way. Mm. You should, this this precept. Is a preceptiveness that you take never to allow another person to pleasurize with you sexually and for you not to go and pleasurize yourself sexually in role play. Mm. So if you are a friend, don't misbehave with other friends. Mm. If you are a partner, don't go find other partners. Mm. If you are a parent, don't misbehave with other children mm. or your children. Mm. It doesn't matter. Mm. But in our roles in society, there may be certain elements that we feed ourselves in this way. So, people have to start seeing their role, their circumstances, their interaction, what they've allowed, what they have taken abuse of mm. in that way. These three things, Pante, are what is identified as the the, the uh, the, what, what the right actions are. Mm. But in this Pante, the consumption of alcohol has to be brought in. Mm. One can only maintain these three things. If not drinking. If they are not intoxicated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. The moment they get intoxicated, yeah. Pante, you cannot say other no. Other person's lives are yeah. in danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. The true. moment you are intoxicated, you do not know what you are mm. taking and not taking. No, Pante. no, no. The party also, sexually abused. Huh? I, I, and the party, the Christmas right. party, right. Uh, the company party, huh? so typically alcohol and typically people fall in there, have sex with somebody else's wife. So, the right action, Bhante, should in a way start with these three things, encompassed with this in intoxication. Do not do any of these mm. things. Mm. And this, after that, Bhante gets tied into the next element, which is to do with the like livelihood mm. because it is of a physical nature i just say with yeah. this pleasure thing right action 
Uh, uh, one main point could be say, don't harm, don't harm ni- neither yourself nor others. With the sexual abuse, for example, when you're pleasure seeking, uh, which is not in itself uh, detrimental or evil, uh, don't harm others, don't harm yourself, neither now or later or much later. Huh? Mm-hmm. So if one uh, keep this as a melody, also when you're stealing and when you're killing, the, the, the harm is obvious, huh? it's obvious. Uh, mm-hmm. Or if you're abusing somebody economically, uh, 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 utilizing their values without their permission or t- overpricing or something like that, it's, it's, it comes naturally that, that, that there are somebody else is out there because you ga- feel you gain more, then there's somebody else is out there that have to pay the bill. Yeah. And they are felt harm, they feel as harm, they feel as as pain. Yeah. But then right livelihood, back to right livelihood. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. So now, ultimately one day, from beginning to end as whatever, you have to live. Mm. You have to spend time. Mm. So the conventional world has chosen the right way to be. Yeah. And that is to earn something and be. Mm. So there are five areas that you are not supposed to earn things with. Yes. One is with alcohol. You're not supposed to make alcohol, you're not supposed to sell what you make, and then the consumption of it. Mm. So alcohol should not have anything to do with mm. Even in a supermarket, you should not be selling alcohol. Mm. Right? Second thing, Monday, is to with poison. You should not encourage yourself to make poison, you should not encourage yourself to sell made poison, and to use the poison that has been made. Or encourage others to sell alcohol or poison, exactly. of course. So, uh, your livelihood is uh, one is to avoid and encourage other people to be doing so. So same. you should not sell it to other uh, people. No, it's true. Okay. So yeah. one is alcohol, one is poison. Mm. Next thing is weapons. Mm. Weapons of destruction. Mm. You should never participate in making a ammunition, a, you know, a gun, a bullet, a knife that may a destroy bomb. another's uh. life. Mm. Second, never participate in selling it mm. to other people. Mm. And then third is never to use it to distract and destroy other things that are there. Mm. Third thing is to do with life, life, as in do not rear animals, right, or life, life, what do you call livestock for consumption of others. Mm, of slaughter. Of slaughter. Mm. Yeah, so don't allow it to be slaughtered. Uh. You may not, you may just rear it and sell it to somebody who will then go and slaughter. But uh, uh. don't participate in it if you want life, livestock Keep it as a pet, but not as a mm. livelihood. Pets thing. are okay, fine, huh? You, uh, they, they are around one day. Uh, you, you have to make them pets, otherwise uh, you kill them. Uh, no? uh, so, uh, as a pet, as a hobby, it's okay. Uh, but don't go and do that for life. Livelihood. For livelihood. Livestock. Yeah. livestock. Lastly, it's about people. Don't employ people so you can sell their skills elsewhere. Mm. Very subtle, Bante. Very mm. subtle. This is how slavery was in the past, where you just went and bought people mm. and then you know sold the people out. You know. mm. That slavery is is, is is what something that mm. they said. Those still days. is still counting out yeah? human trafficking, it sex is, trafficking, and, and, and today, many beings today, causing a lot of suffering. Today, Bante, when you go into the Far East, there are many, many, many people who bring people into companies, buy people and sell them into the Middle East. Mm. So that slavery is still happening mm. today, mm. but at a posh level. They name them as au pairs and, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so the job titles, are, but that, that is slavery. It's definitely so. Yeah. So he says that spend the time in this way where you don't participate in these unwholesome transactions of these five areas. Mm. Okay. Do the right action, right deeds. Occupy yourself in a day. Because that is all you have to do. Mm. You can't deny occupation. Mm. You have to. Op- then, stop intensifying yourself. Now, but you spoke about the speech. Come back to this social world. In this social world, one day, we are encouraged to be supportive of neighbors. And we have what is called neighborhood watch. Mm where every neighbor looks over other people's properties and yeah. being and whatever. Yeah. But it may be a very good thing to do mm. from a social point of view. Yeah, definitely so. But if you take what it does, mm. if by any chance you see something that you don't approve of in a neighbor's property, you may have to sneak about that to the authorities or sneak to the owner saying, oh, I saw so and so in your property putting another person in trouble. Mm. Yeah? Mm. This one day is the naturality of the word witness. 
So we, each one of us, Bhante, has become a very good witness of what to witness in this world and take that information and create accusations. Hmm. Okay? Hmm. So we are very good at saying, oh, you did something wrong. And then to have the evidence to prove it because I witnessed it. Hmm. Hmm. It's on my mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a socially acceptable thing. It's mm. a socially encouraged thing. But it's not saying don't do it. Mm. But understand the consequences mm. as what you may do to another in putting them in trouble. And in the future, investment of such will come back to you. Mm. In Any accusation. In uh, uh, so, don't go to accuse other people. Mm. Just mind, blaming. Exactly. Mind yourself. Mm. Mind yourself. Mm. Even it's the, wrong attention. Huh? Exactly. Uh. It has wrong attention. It's a wrong deed. It mm. has wrong speech associated. Mm. It has the total breakdown. Yeah. But it is so occupied. Yeah. It and you, you become very proud <laughs> and say, ah, you're very, very bad. Yeah. Anyway, so now we have right livelihood. The next thing is uh, right effort. Samabha uh, Jama, and this actually uh, is a good thing to to have in mind all in always okay. to say. So whatever good you haven't done, begin doing that. If it's giving, then begin doing giving. If it's meditating, uh, then st start meditating. If one hasn't done, if it's uh, understanding wisdom and logical work, well, st then start uh, start the class in philosophy or start reading the Dhamma text. So this is this uh, beginning whatever advantageous state that uh, there is not in present in the present moment begin that and whatever present state that already is in the mind if we are already generous if we do already understand make that expand make that become even bigger make that uh, fulfill it perfect it yeah. and then the, uh, the two last uh, articles is the opposite way if whatever but is bad uh, yeah. yeah before you further go on that in the case of effort mm. what you just said don't allow things that have happened happened to arise again. This is the first priority of effort. Hmm. One who has taken this, understand this nature. If you haven't lied, don't go to lie anymore. Hmm. Right? Here he says, Chandan Janeti Vayamati. Chanda. Hmm. You must have this willingness to desire, stop, desire hmm. to stop hmm. gathering any dirt anymore. Hmm. Hmm. Any hmm. bad commas hmm. anymore. Hmm. Chandan Janeti you must know that I should start now and mm. not tomorrow. Mm. Mm. Right? You must mm. know when to start, mm. where to start, how to start. Mm. Now, yeah. Yeah. like your head is in flames, exactly. basically. So, if this ignition isn't present in the person, effort is not put, mm. postponement is present, mm. and now you wait for tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Mm. And, tomorrow. and it never happens. It never happens, because you wait for the next retreat. Uh, 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 yeah. You wait for next life, basically. Okay. So. Now that you heard that effort is the first priority of effort is stop anything that hasn't started. Mm. Any unwholesome things that are not started. Yeah, so unwholesome. Unwholesome. But start whatever wholesomeness exactly. that, that yeah. there isn't haven't been there. Exactly. So yeah. don't allow bad, wrong, unwholesome, dirty things to happen. Mm. Stop that. Mm. And have the willingness to stop that. Mm. Yeah? It's only then that you can go back to your past and clean what was wrong in you. Mm. Mm. Remove and mm. ask for forgiveness for those things. Mm. Once you have cleaned up that space where you don't accumulate any new unwholesomeness, you cleaned up your past, now you have the space ready mm. so you can start growing what is good and new. Mm. Mm. And True. Where you can then maintain what was good in you. Mm. All four of these things, priorities, have this chandan janiti, the, the desire or the willingness to accomplish it, to come mm. to that. And have no when to start, why to start, how to start. Okay, so you can say to stop doing any evil that is uh, very, whatever is detrimental, to stop doing that I immediately. And that whatever that, that, that whatever has not come into being, you haven't done it already, that to prevent that that, that comes. Huh? Yes, to prevent that to prevent one starts lying or to prevent one starts to be uh, miserly, one doesn't share and so on. To prevent that any evilness that doesn't happen, it haven't happened yet, that, that, that this doesn't happen. Yeah. 
and then uh, the opposite with the good. Whatever good you haven't done, start doing it. Whatever good you ha already have done, are perfect. Make it more, make it continuous, make it shine, make it uh, broader, expand it, uh, make it more stable, make it uh, more perfect in, in any sense. That's right effort. That's right effort. It's never too late to stop wrongdoing. No, no. Never no. too late to stop bad things. Never too late to start good doing. Exactly. So, yeah. that, so first to stop what, what would be bad. Yeah. Only once you stop doing the bad, you damage have control. The, you have the space now to now grow mm. good things in that mm, way. Mm, true. Otherwise, you you contradict yourself. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the priority must always be do you know uh, never too late. Mm. Tell yourself it's never too late. If I have been lying, it's never too late for me to stop from now. Mm. Right. If I have been misbehaving, it's never too late to stop misbehaving. If I have been you know killing, it's never too late to stop now. Mm. From now I'll stop. And then, as you say, I think it's a very good point. There has to be a desire for it. Yeah. This desire, you can say, actually, this is desire for purity. This comes from, from this bad consciousness you have, which is a very, very ugly thing and very nasty thing. You have, and then if you see somebody who's pure, then you, naturally you say to yourself, I, I also want to attain this innocence, mm -hmm. this, this purity. Mm -hmm. And so it can, this desire can become very big because uh, maybe you have done mistakes that you cannot retract and then you cannot you realize you cannot never as this guy you cannot become as pure as him or her because you already made the mistakes that that entails your your karmic past of impurity uh, so so there the desire can grow really really strong but uh, it's it's a good desire because it will eventually whether if not in this life then in the next life and if not today then tomorrow but as Bande said it's better to do it now right acute now Stop doing bad, start doing good. Yeah. So this is 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 right effort. Uh, then we need only two factors actually, and uh, samasati and samasamadi. Mm. And uh, samasati, uh, uh, I think, is very interesting. It, it's usually translated as right mindfulness. I think it's better to be to say is is right awareness. Uh, for me, it has that there's usually or classically four articles. And that is to see the body only as a body. I would say a good translation also could be the seeing the body only as a frame. So this is not me, this is not him, this is not you, this flesh and bones. We have to put them down in the coffin and so we'll get a new one, a new set. That will also decay. So seeing this body as only as a frame, that is one part of being aware. And seeing feeling as only as a response, something remote, something that comes and goes. Whether it's happiness, it's gladness, it's sadness, uh, it is pain or pleasure or neutral feeling or boredom. If one just see this eye, it's only a feeling. It's not my feeling. It's not what I am. It is not what I'm made out of. It's not what I should identify with. And importantly, it is not what I should react upon. It's just a feeling. Seeing the feeling only as a feeling, something that is passing, just an emotional blip, uh, it's only there for a short time. Whether pleasure, pain or Painful or pleasant doesn't matter. Then seeing the the mind, the mental states, only as mental states. So okay, there's uh, that. There can be jealousy. There can be pride. There can be dishonesty. There can be hypocrisy. There can be. There can also be generosity. Uh, there can be wisdom. There can be understanding. There can be cleverness. There can be stupidity. Whatever there is of these mental states, then it's neither me. It's not me. It's not mine. It's not what I am. So one doesn't identify with this mental state that is at the present, then one doesn't become affected by it. And one doesn't own it, as Bender say. One doesn't partake in the role of this particular, I'm, a, I'm an, a habitually envious one, or I'm habitually a good-hearted one, or I'm a habitually a, a distressed one, or a, a, I have a lot of restlessness and blah, blah, blah. I have, I am like this. One doesn't see, one see, okay, there's restlessness. Yeah. Well, that's generosity. Yeah. It's present in this mind now. Mm. But this doesn't imply that it will be there tomorrow or in the next second. It's just a mental state that is, it's a passing mental state that is right now. Yes, we, we should try definitely to encourage the skillful ones, the advantageous ones, like generosity, like wisdom, like understanding, like uh, enthusiasm, like energetic effort and so forth. But uh, still we should not identify with them and say they are me, they are mine, they are what I am. Because they are not, they are passing. How can something that is passing be you when you are assuming that you are the same? Right? 
it, it's impossible. And then seeing all, all mental states, all dhamma, uh, as all phenomena as, as a mental state, that's basically what we think out here, these two so-called monks, and this so-called bush, and these so-called forms and colors, they are only experiences. They are not substances out there. They are not a reality that is independent of the perceiving mind. Huh? They, they are mental states. They are experiences. And experiences are mental states. And this also this goes for the rest of the universe. So the whole universe is not something out there independent of the mind. The whole universe is an experience that is perceived by the mind, and colored by the mind, painted up by the mind. It's not so it's not something out there. There is something out there. But this what is out there is its experiences and not physical states. Uh, or properties or entities that are the same from one moment to the next moment. So, and to, just to, just to help this, 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 this um, audience, yes, that's watching that you say that there is this I, this you know, this person that you identify is not there. Let the two of us just give them a very simple, practical identity as to how this has become. Mm. You and I are sitting here, yes, fa facing each other. Yes. Do you think you can point to the left? Yes, I can. Would you like to show these people? Yes. How come you're pointing to one side and I'm pointing to one? Yeah, we faced another polarity here. So then which is left side? Point? Yes, there's no left side, it's relative to you. Right. Yeah. Now, this is what these people have to now to understand. Mm. This word relativity. Mm. Yeah. So we've taken this body of ours, we've owned it as a mind, mm. we've given it a front. Mm. So this is front, mm. and in relative pres in reference to this front, we've made one side left and the other side right. Mm. So actually, there is no left or right mm. because if you take this body and turn round itself, mm. the left and the right changes. Mm. So there's no one side that is left or one side that is right. Mm. It is only the way this physical body of what I have been made. Me has been made, what is mine, when it faces one side, then a left and a right is it's defined Defined at that moment. Yeah. It is this definition that is deluding all of us. Mm. Right? Mm. That, that we, we, we are instructing other people to say, turn left, turn right, go there. Mm. What are we saying? Mm. And if other people do not take on board mm. my instructions, I call them disobedient. Mm. If they take on my instructions, they are lost mo the moment I change. Mm. So in this way, this society, in this conventional world one day. What now if I go out here? Do you then say also, it's only a reference to the world. I yes. disappear. Yes. So now I'm not there. Right. Now I'm not there. Okay. Now I'm here again. Uh. It's only, a, it's only a, a, a physicality that you in your body, uh, take on board, uh, and you move it, uh, and cause existence or non-existence, uh, visual or non-visual. Non uh, <laughs> so, so, but what Bender says is to say, ah, the world is a reference to the to the perceiving mind, yeah. and in, in this case, to the perceiving body, left or right. But this goes for everything else. All colors also is a reference, is an experience, is is point back to the mind itself. So there's nothing, there's no entities, static entities that is truly external from the mind in Buddhism. Yeah. So this uh, subject-object dilemma has been cut uh, through, and Buddha says something that is called Nama Rupa. It's, it's too, it's too far to come into it. Yeah. But nevertheless, uh, I think it's a good point taken up by Bende. Uh, the world, uh, or the state, so we call it, it's a reference point. Yeah. It's a reference, it's always referring back to the perceiving mind. Right. And this perceiving mind is neither me, nor mine, or nor what I am. And eventually, either. It's right. just a perceiving mind. It's a, 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 a photograph, a recorder, basically. J j just to help uh, for the distinct one bit, we say that in the mornings, the sun rises. Mm. In the evening, the sun sets. Mm. These are conventional statements we make mm. of a situation. Mm. But actually, if you look at it, the sun is still, and this earth we are living in is moving. Mm. So, if the earth is moving and this eye is standing fixed in this earth, mm. how can the sun rise? Mm. I am setting mm. when the sun rises mm. and I'm rising when the sun sets. Mm. So what's the actual or, or whatever the circumstances in reference is one thing. How I relate with it 
is another matter. Hmm. So in this way, one day, this delusion of ours is created with this word Sakaya, we're referencing. Hmm. So mindfulness, when you said the physicality associated with the mindfulness, must be seen that you have owned this physicality, created certain fronts and backs in reference to this, you fix it or you move it and you refer it to the rest of the world. The, the universe is, is broken up in parts. So true. Yeah. So you cause even more confusion mm. in yourself and associated with others. Mm. This alone one day. Also, it defines oneself. <laughs> uh, so the physical reality, uh, imagine for example now, I breathe some air out. If I take this frame as me, as mine, then I should be afraid, for example, if I go to the toilet, and I put excrement, something that is inside me, mm. outside me, then suddenly ah, I should say, ah, I'm losing something of myself, come back, come back, come back to me. And the same thing basically with breathing. Huh? So, so something that is external here now is not me, then I breathe in, then this, uh, me. Then, then it's me, it's, this oxygen and this nitrogen it become diffused into, now it's me. So this discrimination between me and not me, it cannot wait if you analyze it just causally as we did right now, it cannot be maintained. Yeah. You cannot you cannot set a border. Usually you set the border by the skin, but we have plenty of things, tears, excrement, urine, breathing that is passing the skin, the surface of the skin of this frame all the time. And uh, it's more or less only a definition, as Brent also say, whether it's left or right, whether it's internal or external. So yes. it's this that you have a body that is denoting that this discrimination that it's making this discrimination. Yes. So, but it's not something natural <laughs> by, by, by any means. Huh? Yeah. And so this I also think uh, you can say by entertaining these uh, analytical tools for a long time, then the, the you become more aware of what is internal and external, that this is an illusion. And you also become aware of that you are others uh, and also the past and the future. This discrimination also become blurred. So the, this dependency, this mutual dependency of the past and the future, of you and other beings, you and the external world, this all-encompassing dependency, which basically spells for suffering, because as soon as you cut one of these th things you are dependent upon, uh, your happiness or even your whole body goes down the drain. Yeah. So very interesting, Dibante, when you spoke about Samasati, the, the mindfulness or awareness that you said, mm -hmm. said to associate with the physicality. Yes. If this conventional world that is so reliant on referencing mm. can get one bit of a view as to how we use the physicality to refer with, that then causes its sensation with the contact, that causes the mind to then to be disturbed the way it gets disturbed or mm. volatility that then associates as to the the reasoning behind mm. right the the hindrances the totality of the dhamma associated mm. don't have to go that far mm. but if this people who listen to this talk can fathom this simplicity mm. as to i am instructing this world to do certain things right and it's not conforming into it it right. starts with this very simple discrimination, huh? This body, this yeah. internal, external, so huh? It starts right there. That is, the, uh, that the seed. moment is enough one day yeah, yeah. for these people to benefit. Oh, is this what mindfulness is? Is mm. this what meditation is? Is this what this Buddha tried to tell us something? I always thought that, so people ask me, where do the ego start? And I thought it's in the human case, for example, uh, I was thought like this. So imagine the fetus that lying inside the womb and it's moving around. It can feel its, its sensation. So if it feels its own body, then, then you can feel, you feel both in the fingers, but you also feel in the knee that your fingers are touching the knee. So you have two sensations, huh? one from the knee and one from the fingers. However, if you touch your mother's womb, the wall of the womb that is, you are lying in inside this wick sack, sack, then you will only feel it at your fingertips. And so this leads to this stimulation right there. Not, it's not on a linguistic level, they don't say it, but they, they notice that there's something that is internal, that is becoming the me, and then there's something external, so the outer world, in this case the womb, that is not me, that is not part, because they, the, the feeling are distinct, they are different. And right there the ego is, is, is starting as a, the first seed of it. Yeah? There's something that is internal, this me, and there's something that is external, that is not me. 
And then, as we already talked about, then you come out to see uh, 20 years later, there's a lot of other beings. <laughs> then you start comparing to these other beings. Yeah. Uh, this I that I think I am, is this uh, worse than they? Or is it equal to them? Or is, uh, or, or is this I, this ego, this hypothetical non-existent thing, is this better than them? Yeah. So you start comparing. Huh? And so the rest of the life don't start, uh, are mutual uh, and multiple. Uh, comparisons between these beings where they are in this social hierarchy and it becomes a long 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 game life exhausting game basically which is only suffering it th- never spells happiness so if any one of those individuals out in this world who can listen to this talk and fathom some little thing one day this occupation to investigate this self hmm. in its physicality its emotional or sensational nature and its mind hmm. thoughts associated with the phenomenon that they apply with. Hmm. But they, that occupation will take up all your time hmm. for the rest of your life hmm. and you don't have to do anything. No, true, true. You'll never be bored. No, no. You'll no. Be, never be lonely. No. There'll never be dullness. That's a su- <laughs> that's that's we say Sapadama Anatta. All states are without a self. Yeah. So all states are no self. All states are without a substance, without a core. Yeah. That is the deepest of the Dhamma that it comes. Right. Now I think we can go to uh, the last point, which is right concentration, Sama Samadhi. Yeah. And there we typically say uh, it's the four jhanas, the four levels of absorptions. Uh, that has to, there has to be something, five things that has to be present. Uh, there has to be, to be directed thinking present. Uh, there has to be to sustain thinking present, there has to be joy present, there has to be pleasure present, and there has to be one-pointedness of mind, ikakata chittu, present. And then there's five things that has to be absent. There cannot be any sense desire, no any aversion, no any laziness, no any restlessness and regret, no any doubt and uncertainty. If these five things are present and these five things are absent, then uh, some absorption where suddenly you become into the object, you are, you are, it's not like you are, even when you are thinking, it's not like you are thinking, for example, on your bones in the knees, and then you are uh, outside the bones in the knees, uh, you, are, you are more or less become fully absorbed into the bones in the knees, if this is your object, or if you have the sun or the light or space or consciousness itself as meditation object, it's not a, a thought thinking about it, it is a thought becoming it, so to speak. Yeah. So it's very, very pleasant. It's, I think most people who experience it, uh, and it's not easy because it, it takes more purity to come there, they immediately become addicted to it. Immediately. And so it can be very difficult to attain it last <laughs> later on because then you sit there and meditate and then you want it to happen. And this said that you wanted something to sensate something with your mind, in this case a mental object, this sense desire. And this means that you have greed for sense desire, karma chanta, and then it won't happen. Then it's close the door. So it's like a little bit like going up to the door and then waiting for the door to go up by itself. Don't start pulling in it. But uh, it's a fairly good exercise. It's connected with, uh, there's some concentration in all mental, mental states, but right concentration is typically connected with meditation at whatever level you meditate. Yeah. So, when to a lay person, when this explanation of the Eightfold Path and the journey is explained, Bhante, this Bhante would not go to explain too much about Samma Samman. No. He'll encourage people to take the effort, right effort and right mindfulness or the awareness and apply it to the right view. These three to be applied to the right uh, sankappa. These four to be applied to the right speech. These five to be applied to the right action. And these six to be applied to the right livelihood. Mm. When these seven things are ignited in some way, Mm. what you have is levels of concentration mm. and naturally it'll get built without trying to force it out mm. yeah so give time to these people to slowly begin to get the sequence inside them mm. which is this uh, word associated with um, uh, samichi patipanna this skillfulness to work out the the steps that need to go, the sequence that it needs to come. And in each one of these steps and sequences, there are results. There are landmarks they see. Hmm. 
learn them and experience them don't cling to them you come to the st- the, the uh, accomplishment you see the landmarks you go beyond to the next one hmm. until you come to your objective that is in there hmm. yeah so th- that will naturally come a gradual way exactly but don't force it don't read about it and try to accomplish it because you have missed the first seven steps hmm hmm get to the first seven steps of the eightfold path hmm. invest as much time in there be skillful with your speech skillful with your action and livelihood have the objective of accomplishment of a, of enlightenment or the uh, uh, goal you have know what you need to let go in your motivation what you will have is concentration hmm automatically inherent by these words i think we say thank you for today and thank you indeed to bente tamagavesi Van der Waalkevesi is now going to uh, Australia and will take up his uh, three months VAS retreat there, I guess. Yes. Uh, this is we do every year. We take three months where we're not traveling so much around and to do meditation uh, an intense period. They are usually very, very rewarding. And uh, so I think we have done these two thoughts and they will come, I think, probably as six uh, YouTube videos where we cover a lot of ground. But in this they i think it was a good thing to go over the core of all buddhism the four noble truths and thereby also the fourth truth the noble eightfold way and then i like to say thank you namo tatsu bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa worthy honorable and perfectly self enlightened was the bliss buddha and thank you indeed for your advantageous attention for your clever consideration and for your kind contribution and have indeed a nice and noble day and have indeed a nice and noble life thank you sir friend the four noble truths to tarya arya satyani which is a very core of Buddhism. Ah, one. All this and such is suffering. Dukkha. Two. Craving is the cause of suffering. Dukkha Samudaya. Three. Absence of all craving is the end of suffering to kanirudu for the noble eightfold way leading to the end of suffering to kanirudu kamani patibada the noble eightfold way leading to nibbana is simply this right view samadhi right motivation samma sankappa right speech samma vaatya right action samma kamanta right livelihood samma ajiva right effort samma vajama right awareness samma sati and right concentration Samma Samadhi What is right motivation? What is this vital right motivation? Right motivation is triple. One The motivation for withdrawal Nekamma is being motivated by a general absence of greed, craving and desire. Being motivated by a generous giving, relinquishing all possessiveness. Being motivated by detachment from the five sense desires of urge for alluring, captivating and tempting sights, sounds, smells, tastes and touches. being motivated for cutting attachment clinging 
to these five clusters of claim, to all forms, feelings, perceptions, mental constructions, and consciousness. Such radical renunciation is right motivation. Two, the motivation for non-ill will, which is the same as friendly goodwill, is being motivated by universal friendliness, infinite goodwill, kind care, non-anger, non-hate, non-aversion, and as sympathy, well-wishing, and working for all sentient beings' happiness, contentment, comfort, benefit and welfare. Such gentle, active kindness is right motivation. 3. The motivation for total non-violence, absolute harmlessness, is being motivated by absolute non-violence, by absence of all cruelty, and by presence, continuous presence, of compassion and pity, thereby offering all sentient beings guaranteed safety and protection from any evil, painful, bad, or wrong treatment. Such offer a full protective fearlessness to all beings is right motivation. The opposites of these advantageous intentions are wrong motivation. Right motivation, Samma Sankappa, is enunciated in Majjima Nikaya number 117, the connected discourses of the Buddha number 117, the Maha Chatta Risaka Sutta, the discourse on the Great Forty. This and such is right motivation. Thank you for your attention, your keen attention, and have a nice day.